All right. So this is a physical device. So when we try to provide some input, let's say we want to provide our email, you can see that the entire test fields we are covered by the keyboard, which is very bad for user experience. So what we want to achieve is that whenever we want to provide an input in our test field, we're going to go ahead and push our view or the entire page up a little bit so that the test field will be showing. And after we are done editing, let's say for instance, we go ahead and tap the return key, immediately our keyboard hides the view should return to its normal state so that's exactly what we are going to have at the end of the day so the next thing we need to do will be to go into our login view controller which is this so i'm going to go ahead and make use of notification center so what happens is that we can list in for notification when our keyboard is about to open our response will be to slide our view up a little bit and also when the keyboard is about to hide we will also be notified so that we can now go ahead and hide our view as well so before we create the notification properly the first thing i need to do will be to create a method that is going to respond to the appropriate notification so when i'm using notification it doesn't have anything to do with push notification it's just a notification model in ios that helps to broadcast application-wide events so i'm going to go ahead and create this method here so i'm going to call this keyboard will change all right so this is going to take in a parameter of ns notification so i'm going to call this notification all right now what i'm going to do here will be to go ahead and say if notification dot name will be equal to ui keyboard dot will show notification so the will show notification is responsible when our keyboard is about to show and we hide notification it is a notification when our keyboard is about to hide so I'm going to go ahead and check for this particular notification. So here I'm going to go ahead and say var r var keyboard. This will be equal to UI keyboard dot frame begin from notification. And we're going to pass it our notification object. So with this, we now have an instance of the keyboard. And what we can retrieve from the keyboard would be the height. So with the height, we can easily know how far we are going to slide our view up. So that's the next thing we need to do. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and retrieve the view frame. So when I mentioned view, I'm actually referring to the entire page. So here I'm going to go ahead and define a new instance of CGRECT. So let's go ahead and resolve this. All right, so I'm going to have frame. So this will be equal to view of frame All right what we need to do will be to go ahead and say frame dot y so we're actually referring to the y axis or the height of the frame that's the height of our entire view so what we need to do is to go ahead and subtract the keyboard height from our frame y axis so here i'm going to have frame y equal to minus keyboard dot height all right now the next thing i need to do will be to go ahead and now say view frame dot frame this should be equal to frame frame all right so these few lines of code we go ahead and slide our view up because we're actually subtracting the keyboard height from the entire height of the page so i'm going to go ahead and create another if block so i'm going to say if notification dot name equal to ui keyboard dot will hide notification so we just need to go ahead and do the reverse of what you have here you can have cg rect frame so this will be equal to view dot frame now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and say frame dot y this is the y as x will be equal to zero and view the frame will be equal to frame all right so now that we've successfully written the necessary code the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and create the notification observers and we are going to do that in the view did load so here i can now go ahead and say ns notification center dot default center dot add observer 
Alright, so in the observer, we need to pass it in the notification name. So we're gonna have UI keyboard dot will show notification. And we need to go ahead and pass it an action. So the action we're going to pass it will be this method that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and type key will change. It's supposed to be keyboard will change. All right. So I need to go ahead and create another observer for will hide notification. So I'm gonna have default center dot add observer UI keyboard dot will hide notification. So I'm going to go ahead and still pass the same method. Key will change. All right. So this is all we needed to do to resolve the issue of our keyboard covering our test fields. So to confirm that this works, let's go ahead and run this on a physical device. Okay, so our app is starting. And bam. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on email. Boom. So with this, we can now see that our test field is showing properly. So if we're typing in inputs, there won't be any obstruction. We will see exactly what we are typing. So this is how useful this is. So if I go ahead and click on return, so everything comes back to normal. So this is exactly what we want to achieve in this lesson. But before we go, we need to go ahead and write this same code for our register view controller. So we need to go ahead and open up our register view controller. All right. So we need to go ahead and override view did load. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code. And we need to go ahead and copy this code as well. So as you can see, I just did copy and paste. So copying and pasting some part of your code sometimes can really help you to speed up your development process. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and implement should return delegate on every single test field that we have on our registration page. So I have email test should return so here i'm going to have email test dot resign first responder and i'm going to go ahead and return true all right so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for our full name our phone and password edit test respective so i'm going to go ahead and do that pretty quickly so now that we've successfully written all the necessary code it is about time that we start registering users to our app. So before I do that, I'm going to set our initial view controller to the register view controller. And we can go ahead and run this so that we can confirm that all the changes that we made and all the improvement that we've made also, it's working properly on the register view controller. So our app is about to start. Okay, so we have the registration page. So as you can see, everything is working just the way we expected it. Alright, so this will be all for now. See you in the next class.